So welcome to the uh, build log for the uh, Folger Tech cloner. Um, if you watched my unboxing, you know that I've unboxed it already. So I'm just gonna, you know, periodically, you know, show you things that are going on when the build log. And first things first, um, I thought I'd mention this uh, black melamine. Um, these frame parts. Um, this happens with like all of the parts that are this laser cut melamine. You know, from their kits and other kits as well is uh, they're kind of messy. They make your fingers like black. Um, I think I can't tell if it's just the paint that they use or whatever it is. So um, yeah, just know if, you, if you're if you sensitive to stuff on your hands, use gloves when you're messing with these things. Of course it'll wear off over time, but I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that. So I noticed something else. Uh, this is the Arduino and Ramps board combo. Uh, these come pre-assembled, um, but this uh, if it focuses the second pin in from the left um, you can see how far these stick down um, it was actually interfering with the power jack on the uh, Arduino um, of course you don't need the power jack for this build or for any of these 3d printers um, but these little pins was kind of it was it was um, just kind of it was hitting the top of this jack and kind of preventing the whole thing from mounting down easily so um, if you notice that, I'm going to cut that off, you know, just trim it down a little bit so it doesn't hit. Um, if you're, if everything looks like it's pushed in and it's just bending a little bit, don't worry about doing this because you could damage this, but um, I'm skilled at, you know, making things, so I'm going to do it. But just know that if you do that and you damage the board, then you're probably, you know, that's your fault. It, it didn't come DOA, so <clears throat> don't write me and say that you killed your board because you clipped the thing. Don't do it. I'm not telling you to do it. Don't do it. Um, but I'm going to do it. So yeah, don't do that. So for uh, you Americans out there, and by Americans they mean including me, um, but for those of you uh, Freedom Units people, um, 3D printers are all basically in metric. So um, if something says, you know, use a M3 30 millimeter bolt, uh, easiest way to do that is to take a pair of calipers and set it to something like 30 millimeter. And then when you find a bolt, that's the distance, look at that, it's pretty much about 30 millimeters, um, then you know, hey look, you found a 30 millimeter bolt, and uh, once you've looked at like M3, M4, uh, you know the difference, and of course, you know, those are pretty much the two that are like the main ones for 3D printing. Um, a couple other, you know, things here and there, depending on kits, on the kits, may even be Imperial, but uh, for the most part, they're metric. So, like the power supply, the screws, the, the bolts that uh, mounted on here is M4, and pretty much everything else is like M3, with the exception of a couple of things. So, just a quick little thing you can do, you know, just set this to whatever it says, so 30 millimeter, 10 millimeter, whatever, and then you can actually go through here and, you know, find a bolt and compare it to this and see how long it is. So, it's an easy way to find the length that you need. Here's another thing we should mention. Small, medium, and large. Actually, scratch that. Um, the kit says it should have small, medium, and large, but uh, I don't know about you, but I see four sizes. Um, I'll get to the bottom of this and let you guys know what's up. So the kit says that there are six small nylon spacers. So that would probably be these. There are six tiny little ones. Uh, there are ten uh, nylon medium ones, which is... There's eight of these ones, which are like the medium size, plus these ones, which are kind of like a slightly bigger than medium size. And then we have the four large ones. So you can see these ones are slightly shorter than the large, but slightly bigger than the medium. So they're kind of like a large, more large with an M, yeah. Um, I will see if that becomes a problem somewhere in the build. Maybe that's intentional, maybe it's not. Um, I will see. I'll let you know if that happens. So I got to this part and it, uh, it's referring to this belt loop and this and the other and like put it on and all that and uh, I didn't really pay attention to that. So I got this whole thing mounted. Um, with these spacers, um, I don't have the right spacers. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen to you, but um, the medium ones, you should use two medium ones and should be able to use 35 millimeter bolt um, and it'll tighten up. Um, so if you don't use the right spacers, 
then the bolt is not going, it'll bottom out in the uh, motor before tightening. So you're supposed to use two of these, but since I don't have them, I only have three of them, I found that the smallest ones, if you stack three of those, will also give you the same height. So that is what I've done currently. If I run into problems later on needing uh, certain spacers, then I will, uh, I'll go from there. I have, um, I, you know, obviously I work at a hardware store so I can get them if I need to. Um, anyway, I don't know if that's supposed to happen or not, but we'll see. Anyway, this belt is supposed to be on there already, and if you look, uh, you know, it doesn't really go on there very easily. So, uh, I'm not going to record this because that would be stupid, but I'm going to show my uh, intelligence and human being powers to this inanimate object and get it on there without taking this all apart. Um, or I'm going to take it all apart in, because I've given up, but I won't let you guys know that. I'm, I'm going to pretend. You guys will all pretend that I was able to get this on there without taking it all apart, but yeah. Uh, make sure this is on the actual pulley facing like out this and before you screw this down, just for uh, reference. I'm actually greatly surprised I was actually able to do that in like 10 seconds. Um, it's just a little bit of room down there, just enough to get that belt under there. So if you do forget, you can figure it out. But uh, yeah, I was able to do that, so moving on. So for those of you following along at home, uh, there's a spot right here where it says, push a weird flanged bearings. Um, I'm no expert in bearings, but I've never heard of a weird flanged bearing. If you're an expert in bearings, let me know what the hell that is. Um, I have determined what they are, I mean, which ones they're referring to. They're talking about these little flanged bearings. Come on, man, focus. Ah, screw it. Um, yeah, that's what they're referring to, are these things. They come in this little, like, bottle tube thing in the bearing kit box bag thing. But, uh, yeah, I've never heard of weird flanged bearings. <laughs> uh, I need to, I need to go to bearing school. So I got a neat little trick. Um, you don't have to do this, but, um, this is the little fan that goes here. I think it's an exhaust fan or something like that. And, um, you mount it here and you use, uh, whatever size, you know, bolt. And it goes up through. And you, you want to, you want it to go up through this side. And then when it sits on here, if you look, it's inside there, it's not coming out, but you need to use, you know, a nut in there. Um, these screws don't screw into the fan at all. But the nut itself, hold on, let me reposition myself. I realize how hard YouTube work is because doing things one-handed is, sucks. So as you can see, this nut does not just like fit down into the hole. It's too big. So what I did actually is, um, let me see if I can make a little uh, jig to show you. So what I actually did was uh, just take the um, screw, just whatever size, um, and you can put it through like this, and then, here it is, you can put it on, just like I saw. And then what you want to do is grab it with whatever you know pliers you've been using and then get your other you know your allen key or whatever you're using 3d printed by the way and actually get down to where it starts to pull itself in hold on it's not actually the easiest thing to do but you'll see you'll see oh oh look at that Focus! Wow! Uh, I'm actually quite happy that I focused. Um, you'll see as I'm uh, pulling this in, it'll start to actually pull the nut into the fan. I just killed my camera. Long story short, uh, once you get to a point, you'll be able to just turn this and it'll pull that bolt or that uh, nut. Come on now. Focus. I know this is terrible. My, my camera works awful. Anyway, you can see it's pulling it into that slot. And you'll feel it once it's too much. You'll, uh, you'll feel it get snug. And then you can just back out this screw. And now you have yourself a set screw. And uh, the advantage to this is you can use the shorter. Um, 
you can use the shorter screws for mounting the fan. Um, you can't avoid this completely just by using longer screws in the side, but that is no fun. It has to be a challenge. Captain's log. Um, I got this going. So yeah, we got the uh, the frame basically is put together, and um, we got some threaded rods going up here. I haven't you know put anything else together. I got this carriage thing going. Um, yeah. But the thing I can really note out of all this is uh, over there on my tablet, the uh, directions for this are, um, I don't know how to say <laughs> correctly, but uh, needless to say, uh, this this is an easy build. If you're very intelligent and you know how to uh, derive information off of uh, very uh, not good <laughs> Um, for lack of a better uh, way of saying it, uh, the directions suck. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. They're, uh, they're not very good. They're, they say everything. I just like pictures, and uh, um, the, sometimes it says something that it's very, 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 very vague. So, um, better than the Prusa. You know, my original Prusa didn't come with directions back then, so I had to basically do it by, uh, by eye, <laughs> just by looking at the model. But... This is working. Everything's, uh, the tolerances are really, really, really tight on this, so putting it together is, yeah, uh, it's not difficult, it's just, you know, you need to be very careful of what you're doing, so I'll, uh, I'll go from here and see what we got going on. Blur! Come on, man, focus. There we go. So this is something cool. The, uh, heat bed is, like, different than the regular rep wrap style heat bed PCB things. This is like an aluminum bed. I think this is an aluminum. I'm pretty sure it is. It looks like brass, but it's got a uh, it's got like a kept on tape cover on it. Um, but it's like a different uh, style, and it comes with a plug instead of uh, you having to wire it yourself. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think this printer has like an inductive sensor for bed leveling, but because this is aluminum, that would allow me to do uh, bed leveling if I put a sensor on it. So that might be a mod I'll, uh, I might talk about in the future. So that's pretty cool. So this is uh, day two. I have uh, wiring beginning, so that's good. Um, there's a bunch of wiring going on underneath um, all the motors, with the exception of the second uh, with the second motor is uh, for the dual extrusion is not hooked up. I'm probably not going to hook that up until everything's working. Um, the more that I do this, the more I wouldn't recommend this to someone who um, is not not really good at building things. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the directions that are not uh, are, well, basically are not in the directions. I've got to the end of the directions. I'm just like unwiring, but little things um, the the whole uh, the spool holder that goes in the back is not even in the direction so I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that but yeah this uh, this kits awesome this thing is stupid sturdy and everything works really really well um, like you know movement wise everything's sliding really nice and this and that and the other but um, I love the way that the rods and everything work but yeah if you're not good with um, if you're not good with directions or the lack thereof, if you can't build something without directions and just doing it by basically logic logicking it out, then uh, I don't recommend this kit right now. <clears throat> this is what, like the very beginning of February. Um, if I'm able to, because I'm now working for them, I might be able to, uh, you know, update the uh, directions for this because the directions are actually version point one. They're not even like version one, so. Um, I'm gonna look into uh, improving these directions because they are everything's there up into a point but they're very difficult to figure out if you're not really good at following directions and this is my third 3d printer that I put together so yeah I can see how someone who's new to this would uh, have issues but um, I will continue on and I will let you guys know when I get finished so I'm probably going to cut it out, but um, I I said a little earlier, uh, at least the way I thought to assemble this little thing. This is for uh, the extruders that go up here and this, that, and the other. <clears throat> and um, I originally thought that you would uh, put that nut and the coupling 
and glue the nut in so it's coming out this way, like so the coupler's coming out that way. And then I realized, wow, I'm such an idiot, it goes in this way. So if you guys are having trouble putting together this, um, there's this little, but they're both acrylic pieces and they go just like this. You know, hopefully this is good enough for you to figure it out. Um, and I believe it sets in with that hole back this way. And then those two holes in the middle, uh, you just take a regular, um, actually these long bolts that are, aren't threaded all the way, and it screws right into the block, and there you go. So I am just going to finish this, and then I'm gonna fire this thing up. Hopefully, hopefully nothing explodes. Oh yeah.